NSX controller. So as after you spin up the management, the NSX manager, uh, you will then start deploying the controllers and they are the control plane for NSX. They are deployed in a cluster arrangement. So as you deploy these, you can add more for better performance and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute and you deploy more for high availability. So if one goes down, you don't lose a uh, con uh, control functionality because these are important. If you lose enough of these, things stop working. So it's not like the NSX manager where if you shut it down, eh, you just can't make any changes, but everything runs. You get down on these and you'll actually start seeing problems and, and just things outright not working. So these things provide several VXLAN directory services. Uh, we'll talk again about VXLAN, but they provide things like MAC tables for lookup, ARP tables for lookup, and what we call a VTEP table, VXLAN tunnel endpoint, uh, which is basically a VM kernel interface one or more VM kernel interfaces on each vSphere host for VXLAN functionality. It keeps these. And the reason is, is that you may have an NSX uh, deployment spread over a big data center or multiple data centers. You may have your vSphere hosts and clusters spread over multiple layer three networks. So as these VMs or hosts need to talk to each other, because we now overlay all those routed networks with what looks like single layer two adjacent uh, VLANs for the VMs, if they do things like ARP lookups, MAC table lookups, or you need to know the IP address of a VTEP on another host, normally you would send out a broadcast. We don't want to broadcast that stuff all over the place. So these controllers keep those tables, and if a host needs them, they'll send down copies of those, and they manage that. So it greatly reduces uh, kind of that broadcast traffic that we want to get rid of. And it removes the dependency on multicast. So I think I hinted at this a little earlier, but we've used VXLAN before. If you've ever done a vCloud director deployment, one of the options for the networks was to use VXLAN functionality. And you could do that. It was semi-popular. The problem was is you had to enable multicast on the network. Now, you can use multicast with NSX, but it's not a requirement. You also have the option of just doing simple layer 2 multicast, which is what most people do. Uh, and the reason you can do that where we could not with vCloud Director are these controllers. You know, back then there were no controllers, so a lot of this kind of broadcast traffic couldn't be contained and couldn't be easily managed. So we had to use other means, and that was multicast. And a lot of networking people don't like to enable multicast, especially in a data center for these things. So it's a good idea to reduce that as we can. Some considerations. So deploy them at odd numbers. Uh, usually you want three. And this is done by NSX Manager and it uses an IP pool for the address assignment. So first, three. These things use a cluster and they use a voting quorum. So you want to have an odd number. Now, you also want them to be resilient in case one fails. So one is an odd number, but it's not resilient. It's also not supported by VMware, but you can use it in a lab environment. Uh, if it fails, things are going to stop working because it can't handle those VXLAN directory services. But it does work, uh, and people do it. Three lets you fail one, not two. Why is that? Because these clusters want to have a voting majority. Uh, the idea here is in case of a split brain. So if there's a segmentation, two controllers end up on one partition, one ends up on the other, the people, the, the side that has two knows they have a majority because they know they started with three and they can institute changes. The single one that's left on the other side knows he does not have the majority, so he will not initiate changes. If you had two, you couldn't do that. They'd split and neither had the majority. So that's why you want a minimum of three. The max currently supported is five. That lets you fail two because, again, you could fail two, leaves you with three. That's still a voting majority. So that's the current maximum. Um, I know larger numbers than that works, but as of, I think it's 604. As of today, that is the five is the maximum VMware supports. These are deployed by NSX Manager. They have IPs, they have default gateways, and those are done by what we call an IP pool. And we'll look at that in a later lab, but you basically just predefine what you want the IPs to be. Normally it's a range and it just starts handing them out as needed. 
These are not in a data path, but don't let all of them fail. In fact, don't let it go below a voting majority or things will break. So again, if you have three and you lose one, either fix the one that's down. If a host went down, HA should restart it, but for whatever reason, get that one back up. If you can't, go into vCenter, deploy a third one and get that one up. That way you're back to full resiliency. Uh, so just watch that. Work is striped across the controllers. Uh, using the concept of slices. And we've got an example of that in a second. Uh, but if you see very high CPU use or something like that, VMware support may tell you, hey, go from three to five. You'll distribute the work out and you'll be able to have more controllers that take on more workload. Probably going to need to have a really big environment for that to happen. But it does not only enhance resiliency when you add more, but it also enhances uh, performance. So some cluster functions, we talked about this. Uh, controllers handle multiple roles. Um, well, I guess we didn't talk about this, we talked about the slices. So first there are some roles. There's some VXLAN functions, like we talked about those directory services. And then you have the distributed router functionality uh, as it sends changes and things like that uh, and performs different types of lookups. Uh, each, an election is held to find a master for each role. Uh, so you don't get involved in this. It's just important. I guess it's it's semi-important to understand this. But just understand that there's a number of different roles. They get assigned to the different controllers. So if you had three controllers, you may have one doing VXLAN functions, another one doing distributed routers, just things like that. One of them is a master. Uh, and they elect it and they figure out who it is. It's not something you need to even be aware of of who the master is. But if a controller fails, another election is automatically held and a new controller is promoted to master. Now workload slicing, which is what I started to jump to a second ago. This we did kind of hit on. So controllers scale for both performance and availability. Slicing is used to spread the workload. And the idea here is it needs to be dynamic. As controllers spin up, uh, you want to be able to re kind of relay down all the workload, reallocate those slices, and get better performance. Or if one fails, you may need to contract those and have less controllers performing the work. It's a bit abstract, uh, so don't get too caught up in the details, but every job is divided up into slices. These slices are then spread across the available nodes. So for MAC tables, just think about if you've got three nodes, it basically di uh, divides the MAC table up into threes. Each node is responsible for certain chunks of it. Look at it as simply as that. As new controllers are added, or as one fails, these slices can be redistributed. You don't need to worry about it. It happens automatically. Just kind of understand. The only time you do need to be aware of it is if you're doing like some troubleshooting and you SSH into a controller and you do some troubleshooting commands, you may need to figure out which controller owns uh, the slice for what you're looking at. Then, then it does matter, uh, but there are ways, and we'll, we'll go through that in, a, in one of the later courses on troubleshooting, where you can see that. But for day-to-day -day operation, not a big deal. So here's an example. So uh, the green dots are VX, uh, VXLAN functions. The blue dots are distributed routing slices. Basically, we have three controllers with the, the slices across, and the first controller, controller three, will fail. So controller three fails, and then the slices are automatically redistributed to the remaining controllers, and it kind of balances them as best it can. The idea here is you don't lose any capability. You may lose performance, but that's understood. Also uh, know that these different functions and tables and information are mirrored. So just because controller three fails doesn't mean his data was lost. It was mirrored across the other two. While one and two weren't responsible for updating it, they did have a copy. So when three fails, they don't have to rebuild those tables. Uh, they already have it. So again, simple. Don't get caught up in the minutiae on this. Just understand that workload gets split uh, across the different controllers. So deploying the controllers, these are deployed actually by NSX Manager. So you don't deploy OVA files for this. You deploy the NSX Manager OVA, connect it to vCenter, and then you go into vCenter and say, I want to deploy a controller, and you do that three times total, and you get three controllers. Each one has four vCPUs. And each one has four gig of RAM. Don't mess with it. I uh, said that before, and I'll say that here. Let it handle the resources. These are the things doing updates, table lookups, all sorts of stuff. If you start messing around with resources, trying to cut this down, uh, 
you're probably going to run into issues. If you're in a lab, resources are very tight. I would cut it down to one controller and just understand if it fails, you need to get it back up. So again, nothing for you to really manage. Uh, they must be deployed in the same vCenter that NSX Manager is talking to. So this kind of makes sense, I guess. So if you this comes into play if you have a management cluster. And often with a management cluster, you will have two vCenters. One vCenter that actually manages the management cluster and all the things in it. And then a second vCenter running in the management cluster that manages all your compute clusters and maybe an edge cluster, depending on how many edge gateways you deploy. What they're wanting you to understand is, is that controllers must be deployed to the vCenter that manager is talking to. Which means if you had two vCenters, one managing the management cluster and one managing, say, edge cluster and um, compute cluster, where would you have to um, deploy the controllers? You'd have to deploy them to like the edge cluster. You couldn't deploy them to the management cluster. And the reason for that is... NSX Manager would be talking to the vCenter that controls the compute in the edge clusters because that's the ones that would be using NSX functionality, and that's where you'd have to deploy it. So uh, some people use one vCenter that manages the management cluster as well as all the others. Some people like to split that. Just understand that you can't deploy um, controllers to a different vCenter. Uh, not a lot of use cases for that, especially since NSX Manager only talks to one vCenter, but just something to keep in mind. We hit on this a bunch, deployed in odd numbers, I recommend three. And rarely need to do anything directly on the controllers, but you can do things via the CLI for troubleshooting a lookup, as well as through the API commands.